bases or our bombers don't stand a chance. Imperial crews are defending the docks. We need them taken out. Alright, Rob, so we're here. Phase one of Starfighter Assault. What is the objective? Well, you can see the Rebels need to take down the Imperial defenses. That's the, the turrets and the Imperial light cruisers need to be destroyed. And the Empire, all they have to do is just make sure that they take out the Rebel scum. That's right, just defend. Just like that right there, wow. boom, an A-Wing getting blown out of the sky by Narwhal Dave. So this is a new ship that we've never seen before in Star Wars Battlefront, the TIE Bomber. Uh, what is this class and what does it do? Yeah, it's our new bomber class. It's heavily armored and armed to the teeth. Really great for taking down objectives. You can see here, like you were saying, it is a tank. It does a lot of damage. One of my favorite abilities that it has is the multi-rockets that it's that able to shoot multiple rockets at multiple targets. Yeah, if you use those two abilities at once, you can have five missiles in the air. Five missiles. Look at it just tearing through these X-wings, these A-wings. It's just getting the job done. Now here's a, another ship that we've seen before in Battlefront, but it's it's been reworked. It's a little different. This is the A-Wing, and it falls within the Interceptor class. How does it work, Rob? Well, it's uh, it is the Interceptor class. It's fast and ag agile. It was it uh, wasn't agile enough though. Unfortunately, getting taken out. It's a bit of a glass cannon. It is most definitely a glass cannon. Now we have the Y-Wing, which is the bomber class, but for the Rebels. How is it a little different from, from the, the, tie, the TIE Bomber that's right on its tail? It's, I don't even think he knows he's there. Uh, well, uh, he's attacking for the Rebels. <laughs> it's a Y-Wing. He's doing a bombing run, but no more. Now, Rob, we've seen a lot of ships flying around. Uh, the X-Wing and the, the TIE Fighter are definitely iconic ships in the Star Wars universe. Where do those fall into all of this? So they're a balanced class. They're quite good at dogfighting. Also, they can take on objectives. But, so they're kind of flexible. Flexible, but not flexible enough. Tommy T taking out these X-Wings. It's going ham right now. Again, in that TIE bomber. He is just, he's going to work. There he is, Narwhal David. No, he was in the Y-Wing, and he just got rammed by a TIE bomber. Sorry, Dave. That's not cool. Not at all. Now, the Rebels are definitely doing a lot of work right now. They are melting through those Imperial light cruisers. Those, uh, as you can see, X-Wing, like you said before, it's there to take out those objectives, and the X-Wing is just melting through it. 15% left on this first phase. It looks like this Imperial light cruiser is definitely going to go down. Boom! Here it goes. See you later, dude. He's gone. He's out there. Now, Y-Wing, you said, was there to take care of the objectives. He's doing this bombing run. He's definitely just tearing this Imperial light cruiser apart. And there it goes, mm. the second one down. That's two, two. Yeah, they did their jobs there. Moving on to the second phase. Rob, how does the second phase work in Starfighter Assault over Fondor? The Rebels need to get into this tunnel and blow up all four shield projectors that are still protecting the dog. Okay, so, ooh. Ouch. You still have to watch out for those cinder turds, though. Yeah, they're still there. All right, Rob, so we've been talking about all these ships. We haven't really mentioned the hero ships, and here's our first sight at Darth Maul Scimitar. What is so unique about this Sith Lord ship? Well, there's a reason you haven't seen him very much. Because he's invisible. He's a stealth ship. I see, okay. And now here's another hero ship, Poe Dameron's Black One X-Wing. Rob, what's so special about this, this X-Wing? What makes it so different? Well, it's, it's black. I, I got that part. What's different about it? Well, Poe's a natural leader, so he's got an area of effect that can help his friends out around him. Now, we also saw another hero ship. Hopefully, we'll be able to jump back into that. That is the Millennium Falcon, piloted by Han Solo and Chewbacca. Now, here is another iconic ship in the Star Wars universe, Boba Fett's Slave One. Rob, what do we have to watch out for with this bounty hunter ship? Pretty much everything. It's Slave One. He's got concussion missiles, he's got iron cannons, and a seismic charge. A seismic charge. What's so dangerous about a seismic charge, Rob? Well, in this closed environment, it's going to get a lot of kills. So it does a big old area effect burst. Hopefully, we'll... That's it. That's the, the big noise. old boom. That was it. So he's definitely doing his job. He's using that that king, uh, in, that mind to his objective, just trying to, trying to blow everybody up, apart that's trying to attack their shield generators. 
Now here we go, we see Jack Frags piling Darth Maul's scimitar. He is just tearing everyone apart. You see he was taking some damage, he cloaked. He's using his, uh, his targeting computer, and he also has those torpedoes to his advantage. Mm -hmm. He's doing great work. He's doing really, really well right now, just tearing everything apart. He's just going through, destroying oh, those rebel scum. But you have to watch out for Star Wars Battlefront updates. He's in the Y-Wing, taking him out, and he does! Takes out Darth Maul's scimitar and also goes after that Imperial bomber as well. Now, there's not much left on the shield projector, but we do see Han Solo's Money Falcon for the first time up close and personal. Rob, what is uh, what, what do we have to look for with the, the Money Falcon? You can see right here, Hans Falcon's taking an awful lot of damage, and that's what he's great at. He's a brawler. A brawler, indeed. He's a big tank. He's got what looks like the entire Imperial fleet chasing after him. He is just doing uh, what, what a tank should be doing, aggroing. He's yeah. aggroing those guys through the objective, trying to give his, his buddies a chance to uh, to take out the shield projectors. The seismic charge going off again. We've got the Y-Wings doing the bombing runs, taking out the shield projectors so they can move on to the next phase. We have 2% left. There's 50 reinforcements left. Narwhal Dave using Black One to chase after Slave One as they are going through, dipping and diving around the shield projectors. Fortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to take out Slave One. The Rebels should still have this. The though. Rebels, this I think so. They've got 40 reinforcements left, 2% left on the shield projectors. I think they're going to get it. Now we're getting a better look at Han Solo's Millennium Falcon. You see he's got some really cool abilities at his disposal as well. But we got Battlefield France doing the, what seems to be the last and final strafing run on the shield projectors. And he does end up taking them out, taking the Rebels to the third and final phase. Now, Rob, let's do a quick recap. We had phase one, where the Rebels had to destroy the Imperial Light Cruisers. Then in phase two, they had to destroy the shield projectors. And now we get to move on to phase three. And what's that all about? The Star Destroyer is still getting power from the dock, so the Rebels need to disable the power couplings, leaving the reactor core vulnerable. Now, it, once the reactor core is vulnerable, is it always available for destruction, or, or do they have to do anything else? They've got about a 30-second window to do as much damage as they can. And then the, and then the couplings will then come back That's down. right. All right. Well, Battlefront updates again, just doing immense work with the Millennium Falcon, but we've got to watch out for this group of TIE bombers that look like they're, they're, they found prey. They, 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 they smell blood in the water. They're going to be going after the Millennium Falcon. I don't want to give Battlefront updates. I don't want to, I want to tell him the odds, but he's, he's got to watch out right here. He is a tank, but two bombers on him? I'm not so sure. I mean, that's about 10 rockets. I mean, I'm not the, be the best at math, but I think that's 10 rockets that he has to watch out for. His TIE bombers are staying on, his, on, on the rear of the Millennium Falcon. They keep on getting those locks. Multiple missiles going after him. I don't think he's going to be able to make it. He's evading pretty well he's so far. He's doing a great job, but unfortunately, no, the Millennium Falcon is taken out of the fight. But Narwhal Dave is right behind those enemy TIE bombers trying to take them out. He is an ace pilot. Looks like he's doing a lot of work right now. As you see, he's using those dual proton torpedoes, taking out the first TIE bomber. He's getting a little bit of damage using that astromech to repair the X-Wing, and then the weapon over, overcharge, where he's able to fire all of those blazers at the same time. Four at the same time. Yeah, and unfortunately, he was trying to go after Slave 1, but wasn't able to do it. The power caplings have been disabled. The Rebels are doing a lot of damage to the reactor, but it doesn't look like there's enough. They have been re-enabled, and it looks like the Rebels have to go back and, and try to get those couplings off of the... They'll get another chance. They will get another chance. <laughs> That Millennium Falcon is doing a lot of work. Now, this is something we haven't really seen uh, yet. Rob is those those Corvettes that have been kind of floating around doing some damage to the Empire. Let's talk a little bit about those. Well, I think that was the problem. The Empire didn't see them in Phase 1, and now they're in Phase 3, and it could be a lot of trouble for them. So these Corvettes are AI-controlled ships, and they are able to help the Rebels push through the different phases. That's right. They'll creep through the levels, doing damage to starfighters and objectives. You know, we're back on board with Narwhal Dave, who's in the X-Wing, and he is just, he is an amazing pilot. He is handling that X-Wing so well. Rob, you guys have done a fantastic job just rebuilding the controls for these Starships. Yep, we rebuilt them all from the ground up, and they're all unique, every ship. That is so awesome. Again, back on board the Millennium Falcon, taking out those cinder turrets. It looks like the power couplings have been disabled. Again, the reactor core is going down, and that's it. It's been melted away. The Star Destroyer is gone. Victory for the Rebels.